Welcome. My name is Tim Rota. I'm with uh, Juniper on Man. It's really good to see you. Uh, I mean, what a beautiful place to come out and see UAS. Um, as Tim said, it's really exciting to be out here. It's fun to be we're doing something at a cutting edge. I mean, Yellowscan is releasing this new mapping uh, level LIDAR. So Juniper helps you be effective um, in what you're going to do. We look at an overall systems approach. And so starting with kind of what an operation is and what the training is and what the objective is, and then how do we help create that process by which you get what you need reliably over time. Uh, appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, thanks to Juniper and, and Yellowscan for, for uh, putting on this demonstration. We're pretty excited. Um, uh, my name is Aaron Lessig. I'm the CEO of Pulse Aerospace. Give you history on Pulse Aerospace. Uh, we've been around for about 12 years, really started out doing flight control and automation for other people's UAVs. So I'm Pierre Daudeville. Um, I'm a co-founder of uh, Yellowscan, uh, in charge of uh, sales and marketing. The company background is, uh, is really a survey, aerial survey and remote sensing. Uh, background is scientists and surveyors and a uh, very close connection with uh, academic research to develop remote sensing uh, sensors and uh, UAVs over the past 10 years. And a couple of years ago, this team uh, started to develop a LiDAR system, and the goal was really to have something that was first very light, and second, that was very easy to use, so that you don't have to be, a, uh, you know, have a PhD in LiDAR systems to, uh, to use it. So it's fully autonomous. Uh, it's ready to use. Um, you know, it's the famous uh, press the yellow button uh, that David Coleman launched uh, a few uh, a few months ago. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is our slogan now, and uh, so you're going to see how how we can operate that. Um, so it's going to be a kind of a real time uh, demo. We we don't have a, a backup data set. Yesterday was raining, so we couldn't do that. So we'll see exactly what um, you're going to see. Uh, the operations of how this is in the field uh, in real time. The idea is not only to show you a point cloud after the flight, but also to demonstrate um, the accuracy of that point cloud versus some uh, ground control points. Good morning. Uh, I'm Chris Jackson, be one of the operators controllers this morning, along with my partner Steve Walker. Um, just going to give you guys a quick flight brief and then, more importantly, a safety brief. I want you guys to understand what you're going to see out there, uh, some of the flight characteristics of the aircraft, so you know what to expect and what's going on. Uh, but basically, you're going to see us, uh, we'll start the aircraft off. It's going to go on an automatic takeoff. We're going to send the aircraft out to its first uh, waypoint on its mission. It'll all be automatic from there. Uh, we're basically just monitoring it, make sure we're getting all of the uh, right feedbacks that, that we need. And then it's going to go out to its first waypoint. It's basically, we have three or four transects running east to west for you guys. We're going to fly. We're going to, again, take manual control of the helicopter. We're going to bring it, fly it right to where we want to land. If the winds stay nice and calm like this, we'll automatic. We'll do the automatic landing. We'll probably bring it back down to five or seven meters. We'll let it land automatically. If the winds do kick up or whatever reason, we'll just manually land the aircraft. We'll start off out there, and then we'll do a few lines over this area, um, so sort of um, natural ground, grassy ground. Then we'll cover a little bit of that forestry area there and the infrastructure that's here. So this is the uh, non-post-processed um, solution, right? So this is the um, building where we're shooting from. Um, I don't know if you see the features on that building, but these are the parts. Through the, the trees, but not to the buildings yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the next right. upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> you see the participant? You were like right on that um, on the hillside, plus next to that shit. You probably have more than 150. You probably have close to 200 points per square meter. We well, can't really see the the flight lines um, shift. You know, it's you can see it's fairly smooth all the way. You see under the trees what it's providing. You see that's getting a bit low on the points there, but I mean, with neighborhoods point, you still gonna be able to neighbor point. And what we did, um, so we picked up control points yesterday. Yes, you trust me on that. <laughs> but that <there are> witnesses. <laughs> so we'll use that data to actually look at how far we are with the point cloud. Um, so I've imported those two files. So this is the uh, hard surface 
files, the out-of-face control points. So you can see them here in purple. Um, there they are. There's uh, like eight of them. And on, in sort of more bluish color, you've got the um, natural ground surfaces point. So what we're going to do uh, in order to compare those two, um, we'll actually use the point cloud, generate a triangulation on it, and do a distance from point, point cloud triangulated to control points. So that's the way you usually do it. Um, so we'll start with a hard surface. The thing with that is that they're spread out. So it's not located in one area, it's just spread out over the whole area. So it gives you some kind of good representation of the of the thing. So now what we're gonna do is just to collect and measure the distance. So it's gonna be perpendicular distance from the triangulation to the control point. So you'll pick up. And what we're gonna look at is the RMSE, uh, the root mean square error of of that of those uh, eight points compared to the to the um, to the point cloud. So I'm just going to do a um, cloud to mesh distance. And what you should pick up is uh, at the bottom uh, log day, you should see what accuracy we're getting um, from that process on hard surface. It's just computing the measures and doing some stats on it. So bang, you're down at two centimeters, standard deviation. So that's, I don't know if you see it. So the difference, uh, the error difference between the point cloud and the ground control points is at two centimeters. So that's, that's a good start. <laughs> so that's, that's quite good. Um, then we're going to look at natural ground surface versus the point cloud and see if it sort of, if it's different or not. You usually don't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's just to validate the data set, but you can actually pick up a few sort of validation points and use them as control points as well. So, you know, you're doing a survey, you pick up a few points, like two or three, and you'll, you'll be able to just adjust your point cloud, but apparently you don't really need that. All right, well, you know, the, you know the process and where to look for now. If you want a better sort of surface, you would need some, a bit more post-process on it. 3.8. <laughs> I'm, I'm not making it. Huh?